Pukaha, Mount Bruce in the Wairarapa and we're about to embark on a couple of days of a bio blitz. What do you reckon, what should we do in the bio blitz? Well, I guess we're here to find all the things. Is that something cool? What is that, what did you find? We found this big hole and we think something's big in there. Watch out, here comes some dirt. We're going to tickle it with my forceps. Let me have a look. The head is on that side. Oh. I did it again. He did it again. <laughs> this is the freshwater crayfish I just caught. My name's Steve. Why'd you call him Steve? Um, I don't know. It's just a name that I had in my head. The point of a bioblitz is actually to find out what is living in our forest. We can't protect something if we don't know it's there. So that basically means we are going to be turning over every log, looking up every tree and uh, identifying and recording everything that's found here. That is what we call peripetus. Mm. It's like 350 million years old. It what? Was before the dinosaurs were invented, this guy was already going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. That thing is a hunter. It is a vicious killer. And you know how it kills? Let's say you're the prey and the peripetus comes, it does this power chuck going and it chucks all over you and then it sets like glue and within a tenth of a second you go like oh, oh, oh you look around your shoulder you see the peripetus coming you go oh no oh god dirty spitter That's amazing isn't that amazing this is one of the most impressive bugs i've ever seen we've got a really cool scientist here today and they're here to help us find out exactly what we have here at pukaha people have been bringing things to me and, uh, and I'm really interested in moths. It's been a good richness already. It's probably over 60 species of moth here, and I might have got to 80 species all up. The scientists are able to tell us how healthy our forest is and whether or not we can sustain new species here. We've got a really good catch here. They're harvestmen. And actually, one of them has got really big pincers at the front. They reach forward, grab little bits of food, feed it back and only the males. What we need in New Zealand for all of the things like kakapo and kiwi to survive is a healthy functioning ecosystem and we can't have a healthy functioning ecosystem without the beetles and the weta and the cicadas, all of the things that are recycling uh, all the nutrients and growing the trees and making everything happen and we forget that by focusing on a kiwi or a takahe. It's what's special about this place is that the spirit is actually driven by the little things. Hey, Ro! Yeah, I'm coming. Can you take that to the lab? I've just got it. I've, I've just been called. Oh, where's my I bag? Where's my bag? <laughs> where's my bag? What you got here is a New Zealand native. G hold on to the thing. Giraffe weevil. Look at that nose. God, and there's the antennae and the legs. <laughs> Eyes. Brilliant. Only in New Zealand. They bore into trees and basically lay their eggs in the, in the wood. Babies live in the wood, make tunnels, come wood, 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 wood. Do you eat wood? No. Oh, he does. Predator control is actually the most important conservation thing anyone in New Zealand could do right now because all of the introduced uh, mammals have caused havoc for our native wildlife. Because of stoats and rats and weasels and ferrets and cats and the whole, all that mm. suite of predators, nine out of ten kiwi chicks aren't surviving to their mm. first year of life. We're over here at Pukaha because uh, they've deployed 180 traps and most importantly they're using the very first of our automatic baiting systems. If you're wondering what brings all the rats in, we're full of uh, chocolate and nuts. What people need to remember is we're only at the start of the journey because by taking out the predators we are allowing the wildlife to thrive. A hundred years ago, there were so many kaka they had to close one of the local schools because the noise was drowning out the teachers. So we need to get back to that level and that's going to take a long time and a lot of heart and soul. It's not just about the scientists finding out um, what's out here, it's also about the community. We've had lots of different people um, visit us in the last 24 hours. We've had school kids, from primary school kids to college school kids. We've had littlies to people on walking sticks, getting out into the forest and actually discovering what's there. So what do you got there? Wow. wow. <gasps> what do you reckon? Pretty amazing. Do you know what this is? Isn't that a freshwater crayfish? Freshwater crayfish, that's right. Or a Waikota. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think it's very happy about being out. <laughs>
Pukaha values community support above everything else. This is the community's space. We're its guardians, if anything. So we need volunteers to come and help us out, to help us with the trapping, to help us with talking to our visitors and educating them about what we do here. And then there's funding as well. So places like Pub Charity have come to uh, help us out with some funding and the Good Nature Traps is an example of that. That's groundbreaking stuff for us. It's game changing in terms of being able to afford to do some of the restoration things we need to do. We need to buy traps, they cost. And then places like Trust House Limited will often support us in terms of a new aviary or grant funding. One body part, four pairs of legs and an attitude. So you can see how long these legs are. Can you see that? Oh, oh, oh. It's a nice day today, isn't it? Where the heck did he go?